afternoon ma this chapter uh, in this session we are going to discuss on string handling uh, so we know there are a lot of primitive data types are there in java like integer byte uh, float double boolean character and one more data where, so whenever we want to store a sequence of character that we call a string we where we have a data type called string which is a predefined uh, class in Java, we won't call string as a primitive data type, it is a reference type because it is a predefined class in Java. So inside a string, we can able to store a sequence of character. So for example, in if you we know there is a primitive data type called uh, character. Uh, so if we say there like char and this is the data type and let me uh, put a variable C where I can able to store only one character there. But when I create a variable of type string, which is a predefined class in Java called as reference type, here I can able to store a sequence of character. So sequence of character means A is a character, P is a character, P is a character. So each, so this sequence of character together makes a string. So then, uh, and uh, string or fixed length. So once uh, you define a string with this many characters, it will not change again. And so these are the different classes available in Java to store or handle with the strings. Okay, uh, so here that is string, string buffer and string builder. Okay, then uh, what is the speciality of string is? String is immutable. What is immutable means it is unchangeable. So once you create a string with a variable uh, value uh, apple, you cannot change the value of this variable. Yes. Okay, that is immutable. You cannot change the value you have assigned to this uh, variable. Yes. So this, if you want to change anything in the string, which is already created that you can do with the help of string buffer and string builder. So that is called immutability. Say for example, here we have a variable called message where we have stored welcome. So this is a sequence of character. And here, well, this is the variable name of a string where we have replaced using replace function, we can replace this W with T. So the result will be like uh, telcom. So if you do, whenever you want to do any changes, this will not happen in the original memory space. Instead, it will be stored in a um, new place. So let us discuss about the string immutable. So as I said, string is immutable. Let me give an illustration of how string is immutable. Say for example, let me create a variable string str1 where I am going to store a value for, for example I am storing my name there. So what happened whenever I create a, a string like this there are two memory in uh, Java we usually whenever we want to store any reference type uh, we know that there are two memory uh, uh, comes in. So one is stack memory another one is we can say it is heap memory. So this is heap memory. So in the heap memory, to work with the uh, string, we have a place called string pool. So where all the uh, uh, strings are stored in this place. So here, when I store Roshni in this variable str, what happens is, since string is a reference type, it's a reference type, this str reference, str1 is a reference. This will be in the stack memory. And in the string pool, so we have a separate place for string pool where this uh, string Roshni is saved. Let us say this is in the memory location 101. So this 101 will be stored in this place. So this will be now located with this. Now let me create another variable string str2 equal to same thing I am going to store again in this variable str2 as well. So in this case what happens is it will not create one more place to store Roshni instead. A new reference will be created here as str2. In this place the same memory address will be used 101 and this will also start locating to the same place. Why? Because 
both of the strings are using same value so when it has same value for it it is going to use string pool and it will not create a new memory space so by which we can increase or you can optimize the memory space say for example when i want to change the value in it for example in str1 i'm going to put a new value in that so already in str1 roshni is there now i am going to change the value of str1 to thanga so what happened here is as i said string is immutable so what happen is it will not go and change once it is roshni is stored in the place it will not be changed it is as it is so what happen it will create a new place in the memory to store thanga and in str1 earlier in str1 one not one is stored right so now this will be now updated with new memory location 102 so that is a new memory location we have here so this string is the place which we have already stored this place is not altered or changed instead whenever i want to change the value of this as if with the new value a new memory place will be created and that address will be updated in str1 so this is why we call it as immutable so we won't change anything in this older place but whenever we assign a new value or any update or any change it will be done in a new memory location so the purpose is to optimize the memory space and what is the purpose of string pool is wherever whenever i want to store roshni as a string like this manner it will not recreate one more memory space for that instead it reuse the same thing so same memory address will be given for that as well for example i am going to create another variable str3 and there also i am going to put the same name here means what happen it will not create one more memory uh, for storing this str2 what happen in the stack memory for this reference this roshni is already in the string pool means it will take this once again and this will be pointing to the same thing so this is what reusability and it is also efficiently using the memory and it also help you uh, since the string is immutable it will also help you in the way of security okay so this is how uh, the string pool is used when you create a string in this fashion since string is a class in java we can also create a string variable in the form of an object so this is one way of creating a string variable another way is we can also create a string variable in this way string class name then an object name equal to new since it is an object no so how will you create an object same way it is created now uh, for example i'll tell you one more example again i'm going to store the same name okay so what happen since we know what is the use of new keyword it will allocate new memory whenever you use new keyword it will help you to allocate a new memory space right so what happen is since it is using new keyword a new place will be allocated here it create a new memory space and then it will store this roshni and for this reference yes one it will be in the stack memory for example if this location is 301 so 301 will be stored in this place so whenever you use a new keyword this is how it will be created new keyword help you to allocate a new memory space even though roshni is already there in the string pool it will not go and take the same thing so if you create a string in this fashion it will use the string pool or if you use a new keyword then it will create a new memory location and that memory location address will be stored in this reference so this is why and if you want to do any change again for example in s1 if i change this name what happen this place will not be altered instead it will go and create a new memory location do the change and update this place with a new memory address so that is why we call it a string is immutable which means once you create a string that value will not be updated whenever you want to do any updation it will be done in a new memory place okay so that i explained this here now next is string constructor so as i said string can be created either in this way or also you can create using 
creating a string object like this also. So whenever we have uh, like this, we have three different way we can call this string function. So what does this place refer to is, so this place refer to calling the, this is a class name, right? This is a class name, it's a predefined class in Java. This will call a function which is present inside a class, which is a constructor. So when you call the constructor, you can call the constructor with empty value as a input or a string value as a input or a character array as a input. So in this three fashion, we can able to create a string object and where you are calling a constructor without a value that is empty and with a string or with a character array. So here is an example. Here a character array is there with the value A, B, C. Since it is a character array, a single single character is stored in the array. Using array initialization method, this array is created. Okay, and this array name is CARR. So this CARR is given as an input to this string S. Yes. So what will be stored in this S? Yes? This S yes contain ABC. ABC is stored as a single single character in this character array. But when I pass this character as an input to the string, it becomes a single string. So it will be looking like ABC as an output. Okay, so then the next example is here we gave a complete array as an input to the string. Not only the complete array can be passed, we can also pass a subset of this character array to this string constructor. So how does this uh, look like? It's like, first you have to pass a character array name, then you have to say the starting index and the number of characters to be considered. So here I'm going to say, instead of sending this character's array, Completely to this, I'm going to say the character array name is CHARS. So that is our character array name. So this is the character array name that is what given here. So from which place I have to start? Two. Two means the zero, one, two. So start from the second index. How many characters should I want to consider from this place? I have to consider three characters. So three characters. These are the three characters. So CDE. So CDE will be stored in this variable, yes. So that is why our output is CDE. So we can also send a sub range of character array to a new string. So this is another example. And here we have another character array. This is another example. Uh, and here I have a string variable, yes, one string object where I am directly passing the complete character array as the input. Here, this S1 is also given as an input to this S2. So here we are passing another string object to this string. So earlier, if you see in this previous cases, I said we can pass an empty string array, we can pass a string, we can pass a character array. Another way is we can also pass a string object. So what is a string object? S1 is a string ob object. So that can also be passed as an input. So what is present in S1? S1 contain this character array. What is in character array? J Java. So when I pass it to this S1, it becomes a single sequence of character. So when I store S1 inside S2, S2 will also not contain Java. So when I print S1 and S2, both of them will have the same content in it that is Java. So now the next thing is, we are uh, earlier we saw how to store a character array inside a string variable. Now we can also store a byte array inside a string variable. So we know byte is also an another primitive data type and it is here we have created an array. So we know the ASCII values of the characters. So 65 is an ASCII value of uh, A, capital A and 66 is for B and correspondingly it will go like that. So what I did is this byte array is now given as an input to this string S1. So when I print S1, I will be getting this as an output because these numbers are all the ASCII values of this character. Similarly, here directly the complete array is given as an input. Here what we are going to do, we are going to send the sub uh, sub bytes or not the complete byte values, byte array values, we are going to take the uh, sub array and we are going to send it to this string S2. So what happened here is ASCII value uh, 
this is the array name and we want to start from the location 2 so this is 0 1 2 or you can say this is 0 1 2 so start from the location 2 and take three characters so this three characters will be stored in this s2 cde so these are the different ways we can able to use this string and also not only this inside the string character inside the string constructor we can also pass a string buffer or a string builder also so string buffer and string builder is also a predefined class in java where you can do uh, mutable the strings are mutable in string buffer as well as in the string builder so there also we can say uh, we can pass uh, integer array we can say what is using the unicode we can able to do it we can say the starting index and the number of characters to be stored as we saw here in the byte array and the next is string operations so what are the operations we can do with the string so the first thing is using the length function you can able to get the number of elements or number of characters inside the string so for example this is a string variable where we are storing welcome right so this yes contain welcome in it so when i say yes dot length of it is a function predefined in java for this string so when i say yes dot length in the system dot out dot print length statement it will count the number of characters in the string so or how many number of characters one two three four five six seven so seven characters are there in welcome so i'll get seven as output okay and then uh, this is another example here uh, as we saw already a character array is given as a input to the string and the same thing can also be directly written as same way as str equal to directly also i can say a b c d so there are many ways we can store values inside a string so now the so the length function help you to find the number of character in a string next thing is string concatenation so for concatenation we use an operator called plus so here you can see there is an age which is of integer type where i have stored 10 there so and here is a string he is is a string and i am adding age age is the integer but when i concatenate uh, integer with a string it will also be converted to a string and here the value 10 will be stored and uh, again with that we are concatenating another string years old so our output will be like he is 10 years old and similarly if we have a very big uh, line of string we can also concatenate it with different line by ending everything with the plus so this is also another benefit of having plus as a concatenation operator and next if you see here in this example for string concatenation there is yes equal to 4 is a string and here along with that I am concatenating 2. So what happened? 2 will also be converted to string and merged with 4. Then now this all are now string. When I add 2 with that, so this plus is not addition plus. Now it will do act as a concatenation. So this is what the output you will get for this yes. But when I use a parenthesis in this place, First, you know, whenever you do any operation, when you have something inside the parenthesis, this part will have the higher precedence, higher precedence, okay, priority, higher priority will be given for the uh, operation inside the parenthesis. So first it will do the addition. So 2 plus 2 will be added. So that is 4. Now this 4 will be concatenated with the 4. So this F O U R. So what happened now? This 4 will be now converted to a string and then you will get the answer like this. So if you don't use a parenthesis, then it will be like concatenated. This is concatenated, so this becomes string. So this all are now string. When I add two with that, again, this will also be converted to string and it will be looking like this. So but when I use a parenthesis, it will do uh, like first higher priority will be given for the value inside the parenthesis. So that operation will be done, then it will be converted to the string. Then also for this conversion, uh, we also have a function called toString which is more useful for us and uh, another function is value of. So value of the purpose is it will always help us to return a human readable form that is in a string representation. 
So if I uh, give a equal to 12, it is an integer. But when I say value of a, it will convert this to a string representation. Another thing is, here you can see, uh, here is an object of a class called sample. So when I add this object along with the uh, string, it will automatically call a function called toString and it will help us to convert this object in a toString format. Let us see an example for it. So consider here is a class. Okay, so always we know class means it contains two things. The data, this is the data of the class, which means the data about this box, what is the width, height and depth of it. And this is called as the constructor, which is another function of the class. And here we have overridden the two string function, which is already predefined in Java. Java already have a function called two string, which is already predefined. We know the purpose. It will convert the input to a string format. But we can also override and we can write our own functionality inside the two string. So its uh, accessibility is public. Its written type is string. The function name is true string. You cannot change anything in this line. And it should return a string as a return type of a function. And what you can return, you can define. I'm writing the dimensions are the width by the depth by height. I'm returning some string along with it. So what happened is, here if you see in the main function, I'm trying to create an object for the class. So when I create an object, I'm passing what is it, the width, height, and depth. So this B is now object. And now I'm trying to concatenate this object with the string. So whenever you try to concatenate an object with the string, automatically it will go and see whether a two string function is available inside this class. B is the object of this box class. So it will go and see inside the box class whether two string function is overridden there. If so, then automatically it will call the toString function and this function will be executed. This function will be executed. So here if you see system.out.println b. B is what? It is not a normal primitive data type. It is an object of class box, which is, pre which is done by us. We have defined this class. So this toString two function will be called in two cases. One is Whenever we try to concatenate an object with a string, the two string will be automatically called. Another one is whenever we try to put an object inside a system.out.println statement, this two string will be automatically called. So whenever you try to concatenate an object with a string, a two string will be automatically called. Also, whenever I try to print an object, B is what? It's an object of box class. So automatically two string function of the box class will be called. So what happened here? In the first println statement, B is called. What is B? It's an object. So whenever I try to print an object, it will go and call this two string function. What is there? Dimensions are, and it is printing the width by depth by height. So you can see in the output, dimensions are the width value then by uh, depth and height. And the second print statements statement, print yes. What is yes? Yes is a string variable. First it has box B. So box B is there, followed by this B object. Whenever I try to concatenate an object with a string, automatically this two string function will be called. And what is there? Dimensions are and that is there. So here, dimensions are and that values are printed. So you have to remember, whenever you two string function help us to return uh, uh, string format and uh, whenever you concatenate an object with a um, print statement or uh, whenever you put an object with a print statement a two string function will be automatically called or whenever you try to concatenate an object b is an object of a class box and that time also two string function will be automatically called and the uh, content inside this two string will be executed automatically if the two string function, if this two string function is not defined, then it will return the reference uh, uh, reference of that particular object. Reference means we know a stack. In the stack, we'll be storing the references. So that will be stored. So here is an example. Here we have a class called A. Inside the class way, we don't have, uh, here we have defined a two string function. So if I have a two string function, then, a is an object I have created for this class. 
when I try to concatenate this object with the string, we already know the two string function will be automatically called. So in this case, when I try to concatenate this object A, which is an object of class A, automatically two string function of whom this class A will be called. What is inside a two string function? It written hi. So welcome. And here in this place, hi is written and welcome hi will be printed. Suppose you consider this two string function is not defined in the class A, then this kind of reference will be stored. So here we are overriding. We will learn all these things later. What is overriding? So we are overriding the two string function, which is already defined in Java. We are writing our own version of two string that is called overriding. We will see complete definition of overriding separately. We are rewriting it for, for our own purpose. So when we wrote, we write it, it will uh, make use of it. If you don't write it, then it will uh, print the reference of this object A. Okay. So let us see the other functions. So next one is character extraction. Whenever you want to extract a single character from a string, then there is a function called character it. So here you can see, so here is a variable called ch, which is of type character. This is an example. So inside a character, I can able to store only one character in it. So here is a string dot character at one. What is character at one? This is zero index. This is the first index. This is the second index. I want the character at which place one. So what is in uh, index one? B. So B is the answer. So character at even for example, I have a string variable string s yes, equal to i say apple okay so this is my string so i'll say system dot out dot print and i'll say yes dot character c is small and at a is capital i say zero so what will be printed as the output what is in the zeroth index a is there so a will be my output so you can use this character function always with the string so s is the string so here also we have used character at function along with the string. ABC is a string. So character at will help you to extract a single character from a string. Next is not only using, uh, uh, not only we can able to get a single character, we can also get a sequence of character from a string. So to get a sequence of character, here we ha have a function called get cats. So this is a predefined function again. So what, what is the syntax of it? First, you have to say the source start, source end, and to, to where we want to, uh, which is the target, and what is the target starting index. So if you see here, I have a string, yes, where I have stored this. This is a demo of the get character method. Some string I have stored in this variable, yes. And then the, here is a character array of size 100. We know how to create an array. Now I want to fill this array with some characters extracted from this string. So how I'm going to fill this is, I'm going to get, yes, yes is the string, yes dot, get characters is the predefined function. What is the first thing I have to pass? I have to pass source start. So where should I start from the source? This is our source, yes. I have to start from the 10th index, so which means 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is the 10th index. So you have to remember always the index start from 0. Okay, this start from 0. So this is the 10th place. And from here, what is this source end? Source end is given as 14, which means 11, 12, 13. Always remember the source end, we have to take 1 minus. So even though here we have given us 14, we have to take 1 minus. So 14 minus 1 is 13. So we have to take till 13 only. So uh, 13, DEMO will be taken. 10 to 13 will be taken. And where we have to store, that is the target. So where we have to store, we have to store it in this character array. So the character array name is BUF. And in the character array, where should you start storing it? We have to start storing it from the index 0. For example, this is my character array. The character array name is buff, right? So it will be like 100 index space. So it will be like this, 
right? This is zeroth index, first index. So where does it start storing demo from the zeroth index? So D E M O like this it will be stored. So this character I have, this buffer have hundred. That is the size we have given. So zero to ninety nine will be the place allotted for it. So in that it will start storing from zeroth place. Even we can do some other place from which we can start storing this sequence of character. And uh, we can also get bytes. Get byte function will help you to derive uh, bytes from the string and store it in the byte array. So here you see A B C D is the string stored in STR. Now what I'm going to get? I'm going to convert all the string to byte, and then I'm going to store it in a byte array. This is also like a array initialization, array initialization method. So how much uh, bytes are there? That many will be the size of this byte array B. So here zero, one, two, three, four, five. Five characters are there. So five uh, places will be allotted for this byte array. Mm, so all this A, B, C, D, E, F will be converted to bytes. So what is the byte value of A? It is ninety-seven. So ninety-seven will be. Uh, so here instead of storing it as A inside the byte array, you know byte is like a Number so a will not be stored here. What is the ASCII value of a? It is 97. So 97 will be stored. And then for b, what is the ASCII value? That is 98. So 98 will be stored in this byte array. So this string will be converted to byte, and then it will be stored in this byte array. And using a for each loop, for each loop we know what is the syntax for. And then here you have to say the array name. What is the array name now? We have stored all this in the b array. And this B array is of what type? Byte type. And I am going to use a variable anything. And then you can use system dot how dot print ln, and you can print the value of it so that you will know what are the ASCII values of the character of the string. So get byte will help you to convert the string to byte. And also we have two character array. So two character array will convert the string to characters. So here also we are using. Uh, two character array and we are using a string from the string we are extracting as a character and storing in this variable and using a for each loop we are printing all the values as a single single value from this array the next is equals and equals ignore case what is the use of this two function equals function will help you to check the uh, data which is present inside the variable is equal or not Okay, so if you see in this case, S1 equals S2. What is S1? It is hello. What is S2? Here also hello. So S1 equals S2 will help you to return true. Okay, first value is true. And because the content of S1 and S2 is same. And then S1 equals S3. S1 is hello, S3 is goodbye. So obviously false. Here also S1 and S4. You see here, here also hello, here also hello. But the cases is different. H is uppercase, H is lowercase here. So since it is case sensitive, it will return false. But here in the last case, we use this function equals ignore case. What does it do? It will ignore the case. So now in this case, using this function, when I compare S1 and S4, it will return true because the data is same. Hello, hello. But only the cases is different, right? So it will return true. When you use this function equals ignore case. Then next one is we can also compare two strings by the region. For example, here S1 is this string and S2 is this string. And I'm comparing S1 with S2. From which location in the string S1 I am comparing with S2? From which location I'm going to start? In S1, I'm going to start from the index 2. So it is 0, 1, 2. So this location I is this is the zeroth location, this space is one, and this is i is two. So from this location, I'm going to start comparing. And from this s2, I want to start from 11 to four. What is 11? This is zero, one, two, if you give, this is the 11th place. And uh, how much you have to compare starting index to number of characters only we have to. So how many characters you have to compare? Four. So 11, 12, 13, 14. So four characters, right? One, two, three, four. So this place and this place is same, right? So we are, you can able to even convert the different regions of two strings. So that is done with the help of the function called region map. And this will give you 
true and here if you take in the second case same thing starting location all are same but here we are trying for seven characters so when i go for seven character here and this one this one will differ because it is here it is inform here it is inform so this will not match so in the second case you are getting false and the next function is for string comparison we have another interesting function called start with ends with so using this we can check whether a string is starting with this particular character or a string or not so here i am checking whether this welcome is a string right i is starting with character we so in this case we will get the input uh, output as true because this string is starting with we here i am checking ends with is another function it will check in the end is it ending with me here also i get the input as true so that is why the result is stored in a boolean variable right and uh, if you see the output you can able to see the result this true 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 here in this case you see this is a string start with lc it is checking whether it is starting with lc from which location from the second location which means this is 0 1 2 so from the second location it is saying whether it is starting with lc is it starting with lc yes so again for this also we got true so this using this we can able to check whether it is starting or ending with particular string And the next important thing is very important thing to remember for many situation is uh, what is the uh, difference between equals function and equal to equal to operator. So equals function will help you to check whether the data or the value inside this two variable are same or not. What does this equal to equal to function uh, help you? This will help you to check whether the memory or the reference stored in this two variable are same or not. so equals will help you to check the content or the data present in a variable and equal to equal to operator will help you to check the reference of the two variable are same or not so in this case if you see yes one is containing hello and yes two is containing hello also because yes one is only stored in yes two so i say yes one dot equals yes two it is true why because equals will check the content in it so what is the content of yes one and yes two hello only but in the same case when i use equal to equal to operator it's written false why in the beginning of the class itself i told how does it store it in the memory location it will store it in when i use a new keyword it will store it in the new memory location when i use a new keyword right so that is why its memory location is different so it will be returning false there hope you got it so here it is returning false because this is an stored in different low memory location this will be stored in the different memory location so this is an example you can go through and the next function is compare to compare to will help you to compare to uh, strings so how to compare uh, to uh, strings so when it compare two things are there compare to another one is compare to ignore case this is comparing by ignoring the case this is comparing by considering the case so when you compare two string when it where it is returning a value uh, whenever the value is less than it will return a minus one value and when where it is comparing it is the uh, character is greater value then it will return a positive value that is plus one when the two strings are equal then it will return zero so whenever it is written in zero from that we can understand okay this two strings are same so using this two string function we can able to sort uh, some strings and all so here you can see it will taking one by one first is str of i str of i means what the first uh, string in the array this is zero so first time i value is uh, like uh, i value is what j plus 1 j plus 1 means the first character uh, is compared with j uh, i is now zero here j is one so this zero uh, string and the first index this two are compared so if it is less than 0 means what so what is for less than 0 if it is less than the lesser value so we know that is a smaller value so if it so it is accordingly it is arranging this value so using this compare to we can able to sort an array of strings and next one is index of index of will help you to get the index of a particular uh, searching element for example here in this str i have stored this value a b c a b c a this is the value and here i want to find the index of a from where in str this is str where is a stored a stored in the zeroth index itself i am finding it so 
I will getting the output as zero. In the same case, I can also even start searching it from the last. So here, if you see, if you see the output, see here, str. I have same thing, but here I am starting you know, finding it from the last, last index up. So where is the last index a occurring? Last. This is the first time a is occurring. But here is the last time where the A is occurring. So what is the index of it? This is the zeroth index, one, two, three. So you can see this is the uh, three is the answer. From the last, what is the occurrence of A in which location A is occurring? And here again, uh, we can also not only search for a particular uh, single character, we can also search for a substring also. This is a substring. So here what we are doing, we are going to search whether A, B, D is present in this input. And uh, so A, B, A, B, C. So this is not matching because we want A, B, D. So here is A, B, D. So which index 0, 1, 2, 3. In the third index, it is starting. So we got 3. In the last index of same thing, A, B, C, we are going to start, uh, search from the last location so it will return that not only not to start from the beginning from the last so this is here on abc is there but it will not return zero because we are searching from the last so this is the place so it is the eighth index so from that is what we are getting as a output and then um, similarly we can able to search a uh, string and a character we can go through the example and next one is we can able to uh, get a substring Okay, so here you can see this is a string and in the string we can able to get the substrings. So str substring of 2 which means what 0, 1, 2. From 2 we will get a substring and here I am saying 2, 2, 6. 0, 1, 2, 2, 2, 6. So the end index will all, all will not be included so end value minus 1 which means 2, 2, 5 will be written. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the answer will be C, D, E, F. So here the answer C, D, all the remaining. From the C, the rest of all. So you can see. From the C, the rest of all. Here C, D, E, F alone. And here uh, there is another function called concatenate. Already we learned plus operator will also help you to concatenate. Also we have a function called concat that will also help you to concatenate two string. So S1 is containing 1. 1 is now concatenated with 2. And the next is replace function. Replace function will help you to replace a particular character with the other character. So here in this is a string. In the string, we are asking to replace L with W. So what will be the answer? H E W W O. Because L is now replaced with W. So the replace function will help you to replace one character with the other. And the next one is trim function. Trim function will help you to remove the spaces in the beginning and, and the end. The leading, this is leading space and the trialing space will be removed with the help of string function. And this are all value of function will help you to return the human readable form, maybe in the form of string. And then two uppercase, two lowercase. So this will help you to return the uppercase value. For example, str, str's uppercase, str dot two uppercase will return the uppercase of this and this will return the lowercase. So this is the output of it. And then split. This is another interesting one. So here the split function will help you to split the output. For example, this is a string S1. And I'm going to ask split it in wherever I have a space. So wherever there is, this is a space, this is a place, this, this is a space. So wherever there is a space, you split in this place. So this, how many, this is a sample program. Everything will be split and it will be stored in the string array. And if you use a for each loop, we'll get this separately, is separately is because it is split wherever there is a space and it's stored in this array. And here you can say, again, I'm using the same split function, but this time I'm uh, saying split it by the space, but only for two split, two parts. This is two part. So the first time when it's a space, it is split. So we got two parts and you can say the number whatever you get. So now when I print, you will get only two parts. This is one part and this is sample program is split as other part. And then uh, next one is replace first. Replace first will replace only the first, only one time. The first time when it is seeing the sum, that alone will be replaced. So if you see in this string S1, where is SAM is coming, here is SAM, here is also SAM. But it is replaced, first will help you to replace only this one. 
So if you see in the output, this is replaced with SAM, capital SAM. This is not replaced because we use the function called replace first. And another function called replace all. So now what will happen? Wherever SAM is coming, all this thing will be replaced. So this is also replaced. This is also replaced. So replaced all will help you to replace all these things. So these are all the uh, different functions of strings which help you to uh, get uh, different substrings, whatever way you can handle your string. So that is possible because of this. Hope you have got it and understand it. Thank you.